nurse, uh, two nursing care plans. These two nursing care plans is a continuation from your assessment. Meaning, if so I've asked you to bring up all your papers from your assessment, with the chart, the new chart, including the paper where you write your notes, is because that will be given back to you during your plan. So, everything that you have written down during your assessment, you can use them as a clue. So, what did your patient mention during the assessment? You can quote your patient. So, patient verbalized pain on the chest or patient verbalized feeling breathless even though the vital signs are normal. As long as your patient mentioned, nurse, I feel breathless. You cannot say to your patient, I don't think you're breathless because your respiratory rate and oxygen saturation are within normal limits. So you cannot diminish what they are feeling, but you can still write it down as a care plan. For the planning, you will be given 14 minutes to write two care plans. So ideally, 7 minutes per care plan. Okay, but we will be asking you to make sure that you finish this in under 13 minutes only. Okay, so it will be too painful for your hands at first, but the more you practice, the more it will just be easier for you. Um, there are sample care plans in your book, meaning like whatever is the case or what's the problem, um, you can use that as a guide to use for your Plan. So, okay, so if you don't have, so all of you have a copy of the ectopic pregnancy, right? So, this case is a surgical case. Um, if ever you get a surgical case on the assessment, normally you do the pre op checklist, right? Sometimes on the planning, it will not be pre op, it can be post op. So, you need to be very careful when you start, not because of it's Genimals, it's surgical. This is the plan. This is what I'm going to do. You need to look first in the first page if the patient has undergone surgery or is for surgery. Okay? Because even if you created a very good care plan but it's not the one that they're asking from you, it will still be marked wrong. Okay? So just for an example, so we'll be using um, genimals. So in creating a care plan, so this will be a structure. You need to write the problem. You need to write um, clues as well about it and then supporting details. So one perfect example will be for pain. You will not just write their patient um, is experiencing pain, but you need to write where's the location. That's why it's important to ask during your assessment, <coughs> sorry, during your assessment to ask, where is the pain exactly? And then you need to ask your patient, from zero being no pain, 10 being the worst, what's the pain score? Okay? So you need to always have a supporting details. What if this is breathlessness? So you will be writing down, so if you have um, supporting details, like for the respiratory rate and oxygen saturation, then you will have to write them down. Okay, so let's say patient um, Jenny is experiencing breathlessness with respiratory rate. You need to write the whole word respiratory rate, not RR. With respiratory rate of 20 breaths per minute, the whole word. Not CPM or BPM, but the whole word. Okay, oxygen saturation of um, the percentage, you can use the percentage sign, but... Most of the words you have to write in full. Okay? So this is how you create a problem. It needs to be concise. If it's something um, subjective, let's say your patient verbalized. Um, nurse, I'm, I feel that my mood is getting low. You need to have the supporting details for the PHQ-9 score. If you're going to write down at risk for malnutrition, you need to write the must score you need to include the weight as well okay if you were able to 
ask the patient some somewhere close like if patient has verbalized i've noticed nurse that my accessories or my clothes they're um i feel that they're a bit loose you can write them down here okay clear any question before i move you have wanting to clarify with her okay next your aim of care this would always be in future tense so wait going back this is in present tense okay your aim of care would be future tense so if your patient verbalized the pain your aim now i mean um the gauge that you're going to use will be the patient itself so you will have to write will verbalize because you cannot reassess the pain by checking the blood pressure or by checking the temperature. The patient needs to verbalize this. But if this is something respiratory, you can have here. So Jenny will have a normal respiratory rate of 12 to 20 breaths per minute and with oxygen saturation of 100%. That is something that you can use a device to check for the normal um, range okay because you cannot have the genuine verbalize that she is not feeling breathless okay so with the giving of the score you need to be realistic as well so if in here we have eight your aim should not be zero it you could go down at least three to four steps down or three to four like lower but it cannot be zero okay the re-evaluation date so it's mandatory that you need to write today the and then open and close parenthesis the date of exam so whatever is your date of exam you need to practice writing it down now like to be re-evaluated today and then your actual date not the date of exam okay but the actual date. So if it's December 2, 2022, always write it down. If it's December 6, December 6. If it's December 25th. And then if it's for pain, it's always 30 minutes post analgesia or sometimes it depends on your clinical judgment. Okay? So 30 minutes post analgesia or when clinical condition changes. The ones that are written in red, meaning they are there by default the one that is in black that one can change so if you want to write here every four hours or every 12 hours or every shift it's fine but the ones that are written in red they are there by default okay are we clear on this part any question first before we move you have questions on it? You okay? okay? So the care provided by nurses, so you are at you are you need to write eight interventions. So this eight interventions consist of independent, dependent, collaborative. So it's a mix of three. So, independent, dependent, and collaborative. So, there is, um, I'll give you a clue for this. If you can, this will just be a pattern. So, if you can notice, so can one and two. Sorry, uh, can you just go one slide back out? I just want to write down the three, those three, if you don't mind. Is it okay? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. On your own, meaning without someone asking to do it. So your advice, your advice that you always say, please do deep breathing exercises or position, those are independent nursing interventions. So when we say like dependent, so normally this would be the times that you administer the medications. Okay, so you now have like one by default that you can use in all care plans. Administer prescribed medications and document on MAR chart. Okay, collaborative, this would be referrals, meaning you need to involve other services. You cannot write escalate to the GP or escalate to the doctor because by default they're being seen by the doctor. 
So normally these are specialists. Do you want to refer the patient to respiratory team, to pain management team, to false management team, to sleep clinic, those things. Okay? And when you do the referrals, you need to have a reason. Not as needed, but what you want them to do. So, I'll show you first quickly. So, we have here E M A T uh T A R I D. So, you have eight. To change the name of your patient, but this would also be used in all the hair plans. So, meaning... This is now like, um, what do you call this? Template. Kind of template. Mnemonic. <coughs> the same. So on your two care plans, they need to be similar. <coughs> Next is the monitoring frequency. This one would be depending on your, um, based from your assessment. If your monitoring frequency is 12 hourly, it needs to be two um, 12 RD on both care plans. You cannot have 12 RD on one and then 6 RD on the other care plan. So they need to be the same. So meaning you're just going to write down what you have on your assessment. Okay? Still easy. Wait, so wait, wait. 1 and okay. 2, they are just the same. So on your two care plans, you will be having the same thing now. So let's see this is your Care plan one, this is your care plan two. So whatever you have here will also be the same on the other one. Okay. So when you write your monitoring frequency, you need to specify as well if it's according to news policy or nice guidelines. Okay, so if you use the news chart, then it's according to news policy. If you use the GCS chart, it's according to NICE guidelines. <clears throat> so A would be like anything that you want to assess. Okay, it's not necessary for pain, so it's depending on your problem. So, but for the example that we have, so assess for patient's pain using the pain assessment. Tool. So, for example, if this is malnutrition, you can use, um, aside from assess, you can write reassess. So, reassess patients must um, after a month using the must tool. So, the, as, the A for assess is just a clue for B. So, it's not necessary that it should always be assessed. It could be like reassess. So, for example, if it's depression. So you've used the PHQ-9, so you can write there, reassess the, reassess patient's mood using the PHQ-9 after two weeks. Okay? Or, if it's for risk for fall, you can write down, um, assess for patients, um, or assess for patients, um, risk for fall within six hours of admission. Or it depends on your trust policy. Okay, as long as you need to assess, something that you need to assess, it's up to you on what word would you like to use. Okay, so with the A, it can be different now per care plan. So letter T, it's not necessary to start with teach, but something that can be an independent. Okay, what are the things that you can teach or you can advise? So, it's not limited to the starting letter itself, okay? So, those are just clues. So, any independent nursing intervention that you're able to think of, you can write it down. So, aside from deep breathing exercises, you can offer um, teach Jenny guided um, imagery, okay? Or well, as long as it's independent. So, number five. So, administer and record prescribed medications. So, number five, you can have same one as well on your first care plan and on your second care plan. So, it now depends. So, if it's for pain, you can be specific on the other care plan that administer prescribed analgesia and record 
um, on the MAR chart. Um, if it is about malnutrition, you could write administer prescribed um, health supplements. If it's like if the, your patient has problem with sleep, you can write there administer prescribed sleep medications. Or you can just simply write medications for both care plans. Okay? As long as, like, as much as possible, if you can try to make it um, unique per problem, that would be really helpful for your next evaluation. Okay? So, next is refer. So, this is a collaborative intervention. So, you need to think now where you are going to refer your patient. Are you going to refer your patient to the tissue viability nurse for wound management or for further um, assessment? So, the referral should be different to both care plans. It should not be the same. So, if your first care plan is for pain, it's for pain management. The other one, you could refer there. If it's for breathlessness, it's referred to respiratory. But it cannot be the same. Okay, here on that. For number seven and number eight, you can copy them. So by default, we have only five similar interventions that you can use for both problems. So meaning you only need to take three that is unique for care plan for each problem that you have. Okay, so that's the most that you can like you need to have a unique care plan. But the rest, it will be the same. Okay, so if your um, case is in the community, of course, you're not going to say instruct proper use of call bell as it will not be applicable unless you want to install a call bell in your patient's house <laughs> and it's connected to your own mobile device. So if it's community, it will now become, um, if it's for, um, what they call this, depression or anxiety, instruct patient to call um, 999 in case of uh, mental health crisis or contact the GP for emergency appointment or contact 111 for general health advice. Okay, so not the call bell, but it will now become anything like over the call. As long as you sign post your patient, who to call back. Okay, but if it's in the hospital, it's always call bell. Okay, questions? <coughs> But normal vital signs, right? What's the case? It's respiratory. You can use now whatever is on the case. If it says like exacerbation of asthma or a patient has pneumonia, so you are now going to write. So, Jenny, verbalize. That's nursing problem need. Yes. Associated with her. It will be like with her underlying condition of Rate 